What's up guys, Callum here. And in today's video, I'm going to go into a Q&A part two series on the video that I made on how to track insider purchases to supercharge your stock returns. And it's really cool because I made that video back in April and I knew that there was uh, a real lack of information for this kind of investing in this particular topic, especially on YouTube and on the internet in general. And it's funny because I made the video and it got very few views to start, but like most of the videos I make, it slowly kind of picked up over time. And I've gotten a lot of really cool comments from you guys and appreciation and different questions uh, that y'all have had. And I wanted to make this video to clarify um, a lot of points, uh, to dive a little bit deeper, to answer your questions, and uh, hopefully to give you guys some more food for thought. And maybe we can make some new uh, videos after this with even more Q and A's and other questions that you guys have. Um, so to hop into it, the first thing actually that I want to talk about before I want to get to the questions is just to clarify. Um, I think that a lot of people got the impression that this is the only way that I invest or that this is something that you can do, uh, without doing due diligence, just to look at insider transactions and to make purchases or trades, uh, directly from that. So the backstory on this is that I made this video back in April um, and in March, uh, I was using this method heavily to buy stocks when we were having the COVID crisis where stocks were dropping by 10, 11% a day. So I was in there buying stocks as they were dropping, as they bottomed, as they were going on the way up. And when you have a very fast crisis like that, where you don't have a lot of time to plan or prepare, I think that getting a really good starting point from insider transactions is a beautiful place to start. So if we have crashes in the future, which I know that we will, this is going to be the one of the first places that I go because unless you have a pre-selected list of companies that you've done due, due diligence on that you would like to purchase, uh, it's nice to have kind of a starting grounds. And so in uh, March when I was buying these companies, I didn't have a lot of companies that I already looked into. And so for me, I was relying on this as a starting point. So I did what I call the spray and pray method where I took my portfolio and I spread it across a large number of bets based on insider purchases and it worked really well. Uh, the reason why I wasn't putting large percentages of my portfolio into any one security is because I didn't have time to do really proper due diligence. Now, when I'm investing in stocks, I put about 10% of my portfolio into a company when I really love it. Whereas back then when I was buying these stocks and everything was crashing and dropping every day, I was doing some due diligence, a limited amount of due diligence, and I was spreading it across a wide variety of companies. And it's hard to say because everything has really gone up, but I made a lot of incredible purchases. I don't think a single one went bad. All of the stocks that I bought did super well that I based on insider purchases. So it can be a really good method for that, but also for finding stocks um, as you go throughout your investing journey, it's a good starting point. So question one uh, is from a YouTube comment. It's saying, I am on the site right now and I see someone who uh, bought $58 million worth of a stock yesterday at $17 a share. Would you recommend that I invest in it? I'm 19 and not com and completely new to investing, so I'm a little hesitant in doing these kinds of things. So absolutely not. I would not recommend that you invest in this company or any company based purely on something that you see with insider transactions. So investing is an incredibly complicated practice. In a way it's simple, but there's so many inputs and factors that you have to consider. It's multi-factor, uh, just it's a multi-varied sport uh, that requires you thinking with your brain and combining many, many different things. So this is just one element, kind of like the price to earnings ratio or the amount of debt that a company has. There's so many things that you can take into consideration. This is just one of them. This is just a starting point. I would never buy a stock purely based on this. And I think that when you say you're 19, when I first got into investing, I did dumb stuff. And if you look on the news today, a lot of traders are speculating. A lot of young people are making incredibly risky bets with large amounts of their portfolio. And I think it's a way to make a lot of money quick, but it's also a way to lose a lot of money fast. And no one really gets rich like that over the long term. So I really recommend figuring out how to properly invest. And I'll talk about that more in this video, but how to do way more due diligence on a stock before you buy it. I don't buy any stock based on any one factor or any one thing that I see. I read all of their filings. I dig in super deep before I make a purchase. Question number two, do you have rules that you check or stick to 
stick by to get a trade. So honestly, I don't trade. Um, it's incredibly rare that I will trade a stock, get in, get out, uh, do a short term bet. And that's kind of what I think about with trading. When I think about the word trading, I think of buying a stock with the implicit assumption that you're going to sell it soon for a profit, like very soon. Um, and I try to focus on investing. So with every company that I buy, I get very comfortable with it. I do a lot of due diligence. And when I buy it, I plan on holding it for five or 10 years or more. And the fact is that this past year has been so volatile on the upside. It's been incredibly volatile, way more than what I was expecting. So I've bought stocks where they're up 100%, 200%, 300% in a very short amount of time. And I've ended up selling if I think that it's gotten to fair value or beyond that. And so I think that I plan to hold a stock for a long time, but if there's a lot of volatility and it goes up way faster than I was expecting, then I will sell it. Because a lot of these stocks, I bought them and I got all the gains that I was expecting in five or 10 years in three to six months. And if it's fully valued, I'm gonna sell. So are there any rules that I check to or stick by? No, there's no hard or fast rules, but there are a lot of things that I specifically look at when I'm investing in a stock. Way too many to name right here. Um, insider trading uh, would be one of them, insider buying, but I don't need that. And the reason which I'm gonna get into a bit is that I really look at insider ownership. So what's even more important than insider transactions is insider ownership. Because if you are investing alongside insiders where they have a significant amount of their net worth invested into a stock, uh, that factor does well over time. Buying companies with high inside ownership does really well. And I think that I own some companies where they have 70% insider ownership. So 70% of the company is owned by management. So even if the stock falls by a lot, you might not, it might not show up on Open Insider. They might not be buying the stock when it goes down or selling when it goes up because they just own a ton of the stock. So if you owned an enormous amount of your net worth in a business and it dropped by 50%, if you had extra cash, maybe you would buy. But a lot of the times these owner operators own the stock for decades and don't change their ownership uh, status. They don't sell stock, they don't buy stock. And historically, they do very well over time. So even if you don't see insider buying, I always look at insider ownership to get an idea of how much of a company the insiders own. And I try to buy companies where insiders do have a stake rather than not have a stake. There's a ton of other factors. I look at how much debt a company has, the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow, lots of other factors, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Number three, is that kind of info limited to US companies? And yes, it is. So every single country has their own securities laws and their own agency that regulates that. We have the SEC in the United States. We have our own laws. Australia has its own laws. Canada has its own laws. Great Britain has its own laws. So everywhere is totally different. I primarily invest in the United States. That's how it works here, but it works different for every country. Some countries don't report stuff like this. Some countries do. The United States typically has the best uh, securities laws in general out of most countries. Question four, uh, so thank you. Wouldn't you think that insiders who are buying more of their own company's stock, even if the value is going down, are doing so because they are overconfident about their own company's future performance? That is a really good question and yes, absolutely. So again, I do not fully rely on insider transactions and I always dig super deep into the stock because there are so many reasons as well why a, someone could buy a stock. Yes, they think it's going up, but there, you can definitely have overconfident management or management that fully doesn't appreciate the risk that their company is running into. They might be emotionally tied up in the stock. They might be buying a small amount of stock to paint the tape, basically to get it up on Open Insider and other websites so people maybe take a look into their company. There's a lot of factors. And so I don't purely rely upon that and I'll always look into it. And just because a company is down a lot and insiders are buying doesn't mean it's a good investment. It might have a lot of really hardcore problems uh, that it's encountering and it can continue to drop many, many percent more than where it's at, but that is a good question. So many things you have to look into with investing. Number five, so what kind of returns are you able to make this way? That totally depends on you as an individual person and your own skills in analyzing stocks. The year, I mean, returns are not consistent, they're varied. I did super well with this method in 2020, but I don't take that seriously because you have to have a performance track record of five, 10 years, and even then, 
people, people's performance changes throughout the decades. I mean, you have many different factors that affect uh, your performance and the stocks that you buy that are out of your control. But I will say that they've done academic studies on insider purchases and they have shown that it is a positive factor. So in investing, there's a lot of different factors like the value factor, momentum factor, and insider purchases is one of those factors as well as insider ownership, high insider ownership. But they have shown that you do get a couple points of outperformance by buying companies in which insiders are currently buying. So it works, uh, but I wouldn't only rely upon this. And again, never buy a company just based on insider purchases. Um, so now there are a ton of uh, people trying to dunk on me as well, uh, which I appreciate for the take on Zoom. For the record, I was not making any kind of market call, but I did wanted to bring up Zoom stock because it, at the time that I made it in April, that was like the hottest glamour stock where everyone was basically just blindly buying Zoom without looking at the market cap or the valuation because, oh, every, it's first order thinking, like everyone's using Zoom, everyone's stuck at home, I'm gonna buy Zoom and it worked really well for people. The thing is, I don't, first off, I don't short sell stocks. Second off, I don't buy tech stocks. Um, I was not making a market call on Zoom and nothing in investing really is predictive. I mean, over a large amount of uh, companies, over a large period of time, you can predict certain things, but with individual stocks in the short term, you cannot predict price. Uh, you, can, you can't really predict anything. Anything can happen with these stocks and we are in a retail mania. so any stock can go up a lot. And also, which I'll get into in a minute, every tech stock has insider selling and not insider buying. And I'm gonna to touch on why in a second, but I was not making any kind of call uh, with Zoom there. But I appreciate people pointing that out. Uh, so number six, um, when it comes to insider trading website, why is it that so many successful stocks such as Zoom, Tesla, Facebook, et cetera, haven't had many purchases, yet the stock is still going up and probably will continue to? So the reason why is that tech stocks are kind of in a league of their own where pretty much unanimously they issue lots of shares to insiders. So they prefer uh, as compensation, they'll pay their employees and their management cash, but they also pay in stock. And the reason why is that it doesn't really show up on the accounting. Stock-based compensation is an easy way for companies to reward their employees without having a cash expense in their financials. And it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like it's good to get people invested in the company. However, I would prefer if the insiders bought their stock rather than having, be, having it gifted to them. But what you're gonna find is with tech stocks, if your entire salary was coming from a company and then you were given 10 or $15 million of stock in Tesla or Facebook, I would be selling too. Because even if you like the business and you think it's gonna do well over time, you don't want 100% of your net worth tied up in the company that you work for where all of your income comes from. So because these insiders are receiving so much stock that they don't have to buy and all of their income is coming from the company, they're always gonna be net sellers of the stock. Even if they like the business and think it's gonna do well over the long term, they're gonna to wanna to diversify into land, you know, real estate, other stocks, other businesses, and they don't wanna have all of their net worth tied up in one company in which they work for, which makes total sense to me. So you're always gonna see this with tech stocks. They're always gonna be net sellers, and that doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy them. However, I personally don't buy them, and I try to not buy companies where they are gifting enormous amounts of shares to insiders, because what you're gonna see over time is that you're gonna get diluted as the share count goes up. And sometimes they buy the stock in order to not show the share count going up. So they buy the stock back so they can compensate their management and still uh, not have their share price or their share count uh, continually going up. But with some companies like Twitter, um, I've heard, uh, I've seen this on there where basically they pay out a ridiculous percentage of like their net income or their EBITDA or whatever as stock-based compensation. So it is something to look out for and something to question, because if you look at some of these charts, like they are, or at, at Open Insider, they are selling millions of dollars constantly, like all the directors, all the, the CEO, the, the C-suite executives, they're bombing out of so much stock. And it does make you wonder like, how many shares are they issuing? So I always look at share count as well over time and see how much you're getting diluted by, because that will uh, affect your returns in a stock. Number seven is I'm also a student of finance um, at that school, where did you go to? Uh, so I didn't go to college uh, for finance or investing or anything like that. This is something that I've just taught myself by reading books, listening to podcasts and analyzing companies. 
To me, I consider it a lifelong skill. So a lot of people say, why would you ever do individual investing? You can't beat the market. You're just wasting time. You should just buy, buy passive index funds. Personally, I don't feel comfortable owning index funds. I like to know what I own. I like to be able to know, hey, I have this portfolio of 10 stocks or 15 stocks or 20 stocks. I like these businesses. I like the prices that they are offered at. Uh, and I think that you can do really well over time if you analyze businesses and do that. I consider investing to be a lifelong skill, something that I'm gonna to use to build wealth over the course of my entire life. So I don't mind putting in large amounts of time learning how to analyze businesses because I think it's a very worthwhile skill that is gonna pay off handsomely uh, for me and you over time. I think it's a great thing to get into. But again, I'm not an expert and I don't really think anyone should be taking advice from me. I'm 28 years old, I am new to investing, but. The reason why I am doing this is because I made this video is because there was a lack of supply for information on insider transactions. Obviously from all these questions and views, people like it and there is a need for it. So I'm just making this follow up video, but I'm not selling any kind of product. I'm not an expert. I don't manage money. This is something that I do. I have a full time job as a videographer. This is just something I do on the side to grow my wealth over time and hope I can uh, help a little bit and give back, but I wouldn't take anything I'm saying too seriously. So question eight, you also mentioned selling stock, especially for those who receive it as their salary, even though in the video you mentioned how there's a lot of reasons to sell, but only one reason to buy, which I loved. So why is it that we're not seeing purchases with these companies? I see all red when I search up companies like Tesla, Zoom, etc. but there's no, been nothing but success. I understand the selling part, but why not the lack of, or why the lack of purchases? So. The reason why is because they're receiving so much for free. So that's part of the problem uh, with these companies and a lot of other stocks that you're gonna look into is that if management's being gifted large amounts of ownership for free, why would you buy? If, you're, if your entire income's coming from the company and you're constantly getting free shares, why would you, and so much of your net worth is tied up in it, why would you, why would you be buying the stock? You're probably just gonna be selling. And I do think that when you're forced to buy the stock on the open market, you treat the company very differently than when you receive the stock for free, but that's why. And again, you know, so many young people only buy tech stocks. Um, I personally fish at the bottom of the ocean, so I don't buy tech stocks, I don't buy, and not because they're tech, I would buy tech stocks, but I don't buy large businesses, I only buy small businesses. And I'm gonna get into that in a second, um, but there's your answer there. Um, also, so it's the first time I've ever reached out to someone whose video I watched. Um, I will really appreciate it if you can make a video on financial statements. I've been trying to find video or books that can give me a better understanding about financial statements but haven't had much luck. So this is something that I ran into a lot that I struggled a lot with is learning how to read financial statements if you didn't go to school for finance or something like that. So I have read books on accounting and there's actually books that you can get for free from the library. I've gotten even audiobooks that go over accounting principles and define certain uh, words that you might not know and also show you how to read financial statements so that you can learn how to analyze a business. And as they say, financial statements are like the language of, uh, or accounting is the language of business. So you really have to gain an understanding um, of that. So I would look at accounting books, simple accounting books and work your way up. And I would also, there's some good podcasts uh, where if you go to like a podcast app and you search the cash flow statement, the balance sheet, stuff like that, there are some good podcasts where people break down what these statements mean. And I think that the income statement and the balance sheet are pretty simple to understand. I had the most trouble understanding the cash flow statement because it was a little bit counterintuitive how it works. But there you go. And then also there's another question that relates to this, which is basically, uh, you mentioned doing a research on a stock and taking a look at their financials. Um, how do you find those financials and what exactly do you do with them? Is there a book that's helped you? So a similar question. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hop into my computer real quick and show you guys how to find the financial statements and how to start analyzing a stock that you think is interesting. So we're here in Open Insider and what I do again, just as a reminder, I click on officers because I'm not gonna really wanna look at directors or 10% owners. I'm gonna go over to the minimum amount. I'm gonna bump it up to five or 10K. I don't do zero because I don't wanna see the super small purchases because I wanna kind of eliminate people trading the tape or painting the tape. Um, and I'll just hit purchases and I'll search. Um, and then also, yeah, I never talked to you guys about this last time, but on the left here, uh, you have different symbols. Uh, and if you scroll to the bottom, you'll see that M is for multiple transactions and filings, which you'll see a lot. 
D is derivative transaction and filing. I would take these less seriously because it's an option exercise. So it's probably something that they receive for free. So I would not take that as seriously. And then A is gonna be an amending filing and then E, which you don't see as often as an error. So uh, if we're looking here, um, I can pull up any of these stocks, but let's go with M. Claire Financial. Um, so just to show you guys how to find their financial statements, I don't even know what this company does. It's probably a bank. Uh, it's a bank holding company. So if you just go to Google, you can type in that, or I usually type in stock at the end of it. Uh, the easiest way I found is just go to Yahoo Finance, uh, hop over to uh, their profile, and it'll have their website. So you just wanna go to their website, and you can go to Edgar, which is the SEC's uh, database. So it's sec.gov, um, which, gov and then you can go to company filings you can type in any ticker there i just like to go to their company because uh to their website i just find it uh easier to hop into and they have more information there that i like so because i think this is the bank corp uh so usually banks uh they'll have sometimes they'll have like a bank holding company and then the bank underneath it. And so if you go to the bank holding company's website, that's where they'll have all the information. But for companies in general, even very large companies, if you go to their website, they're always gonna have an insider relations tab. Um, so at the top, is it looks like that's where it is. I mean, there's uh, up here, the financials. Uh, but at a lot of other companies, at the bottom here, usually you'll see something for investor relations. But because this is set up for the, uh, it's a bank corp, it's a bank holding company. So this is kind of set up for investors. It's just really easy to, to see for this one. So if you go to financials, um, you'll go to the SEC filings and uh, this is where you can scroll down. So form four is the insider transactions. But what we're gonna do, um, I wanna go to the three main things you wanna look at is the proxy statement the 10Q, which is the latest quarterly filing, and the 10K. So the 10K is like the filing for the whole year, and they're always filed later. So you file it for a previous uh, period. So you wanna read the 10K, which has a ton of information. The 10Q has the latest quarterly information, so it's filed quarterly four times a year. And then the proxy statement um, has a lot of good information on there as well. So if we just filter for proxy statements, uh, I think that this is gonna be the main one because there's a lot of proxy stuff, but I think that this is gonna be uh, the main one for the year. So I'm just gonna open up the HTML. And when you scroll down, the proxy statement is, it gives you really good information on the people running the company. Um, it'll have like different proposals that they have. Uh, it'll have how much stock they own. It'll have what their compensation is. So it gives you a lot of information to look into. Just to show you guys something I always look at, is these are all the insiders, uh, and this is the amount of stock that they own, uh, and this is the percentage of the stock. So the insiders own 17% of the uh, business, which is really good, and you can see how much they own, uh, and so that's a, a great place, a great thing to look at, and if you scroll down further, you'll be able to see executive compensation, stuff like that, but I always read all of this stuff. And so when I first got into investing, I didn't really understand how to analyze a business. I think that's a lot of people's question, is how do I even know if something is a good investment? And what I think is really cool is that the very first company that you investigate is gonna be the hardest one to do and you get better over time. But what I was shocked by is when you really start reading these filings, yeah, there's gonna be a lot of words that you don't understand and kind of financial jargon that you might not get. However, you are gonna be surprised at how much you do understand. So it's really kind of like reading a book. As you're reading their financial statements, as you're reading the commentary from management, you are going to start to develop an opinion. So you're gonna to start to see stuff that sticks out to you, like red flags or green flags, but basically you're gonna see stuff where you're like, well, that doesn't really make sense. Why do they structure the deal like this? Or why are they getting all of this debt at a high interest rate? Or what are they doing? Or why do they issue these shares? Or what's going on? And you're gonna to start to eliminate a lot of companies. So when you start out investing, you are just buying everything speculatively. But when you start really investing and looking into companies, you're gonna read a lot of companies where you don't really like certain aspects of it and different red flags stick out to you and you end up not buying the business. You're gonna buy a small percentage of the stocks that you look into. And then you're also gonna find companies that you understand the business, you like management, you everything is reasonable to you and the price looks good and you end up buying it. But it's very important to 
really do proper due diligence if you want to get wealthy over time investing in stocks because what you're going to have happen is stocks are going to go against you. You have to be very patient and you have to not be so focused on the price that's constantly being offered to you because there will be times when you buy a stock and you're down by 30 or 40% very quickly. And if you've done no due diligence, you're gonna end up selling or being confused or not knowing what to do. But if you understand the company and you like the business that you're in, you're gonna be much calmer and able to hold a stock for the long term and do very well over time. And the last thing that I wanna touch on for you guys, because I imagine that you're all individual uh, investors with probably a lower net worth like myself, uh, I think that you really have to consider that you have an enormous advantage over institutional investors and professional investors. And I would constantly be asking yourself, what is that advantage? What kind of company should I be looking into? What can I invest in that no one else can invest in? And one of the biggest invest, uh, advantages that individual investors have is that you can buy small companies. You can buy micro caps, nano caps, you can buy illiquid stocks, you can buy OTC stocks, you can buy stocks that are not listed on major exchanges, you can buy stocks where the shares barely trade. Uh, and the reason being is that for people that manage money and large amounts of money and professional investors and asset management companies, they can only buy large stocks. So there's a rule, it's not really hard and fast, but you can really only buy or invest in companies that are at least the size of your assets under management. So let's say that you're managing a billion dollars as a professional investor, you can't really look at companies with a market cap of less than a billion dollars. And the reason why is because it is very unlikely that you'll be able to get a sizable position that actually makes a difference in your firm. So for any stock, there's only so much float available uh, that's publicly traded every day. And if you're managing a billion dollars, you can't buy a hundred million dollar company because you might only be able to get $5 million of stock in that company, and it $5 million would not make a dent in a billion dollar asset management uh, situation. So you can only look at companies with a billion uh, in market cap or more. And so as a result, professional investors in large asset management companies buy large cap stocks, they buy mega cap stocks, they buy tech stocks, they buy these huge companies and they spend a lot of time researching and analyzing these businesses and they have an extreme edge over you as the individual investor. For me, I see no reason to try to compete in large cap stocks, mid cap stocks, or even small cap stocks. Um, I do buy some small cap stocks and for sure, but in general, I focus on micro cap, nano cap, much smaller stocks. I focus on illiquid stocks. I focus on obscure stocks and that doesn't have to be you. There's many different ways to invest. It's just something to consider is I would think about what advantages do I have as an individual over the big fish, which are a lot, because not only can you invest in illiquid companies or small companies that are difficult to get shares in, you can also take a very long investing time horizon. No one is judging you or grading you on a quarterly or yearly basis. There can be times where you underperform, but you can find very attractively priced businesses and you can buy them with no career risk and you can hold them for a long time and you can do very, very well like that. The reason why I like small companies is that in a less efficient uh, market, which is the micro cap market, it's less efficient because you have less players focusing on it. So with large cap stocks, most things are priced correctly because so many people are focusing on it. But with smaller micro cap stocks that are illiquid where very few shares trade, it's more likely that there will be a price inefficiency in the business, thus creating an opportunity. So there's a lot of different ways to invest. I kind of like value investing for myself and that means a lot to a lot of different people. But basically I try to find companies that I like where I like the kind of business that they do. It makes sense to me, I understand it. I like the people that are running the business and I think that it's worth more than what it's trading at. So I buy the stock and I sit patiently and I wait for months or years and uh, it will do well over time. If you're buying attractive businesses that are good businesses at good prices, and you hold them for the long term and you concentrate and you learn how to analyze, you're gonna do super well, you're gonna have great returns. So I hope that you guys enjoyed uh, this video. Please comment below what you think uh, your biggest advantage is as an individual investor and any other questions that you guys have. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, uh, consider subscribing. I make videos on investing, meditation, minimalism, a ton of other subjects. And I'm not trying to be like an investing guru or like an influencer in this space. It's just something that I really enjoy 
and occasionally I'll make videos on it if you guys have questions or topics that you guys want covered. So comment below, subscribe up, like the video so more people can see this and I'll see you guys soon. Ciao.